Book 3, Chapter 11, Angel Back in the classroom, Mr. Willis shares with us that he has received approval for our listening day event. In fact, the administration of the facility thought it was such a great idea that if it is a success, they will have it again and it can become part of the activities at the facility. The day is set when our class will go to interview the senior citizens. It is exciting to be part of something that will inspire not only our class, but for all who participate. The day will be held three Saturdays from now and until then, we are to gather information on each individual who participates and then learn about the time when they were our age. Each student is being paired up with a participant to create the questions and do the homework on the information that will be provided in the next week. Charles is the interviewer for all participants and Baxter is the cameraman. Limerick is excited because she has been paired up with a lady who once lived in Ireland. I have been paired up with a gentleman who was well into his 90s. Our classroom buzzes with activity. There is plenty to do. The local newspaper has been informed of our event. It will be as big as the fundraising event we had for the animals. At recess, we sit on the bench. We can't help but feel the loss of Sir. Do you think he went right to heaven? Baxter asks in a very hushed tone. I do believe he is in heaven, I reply. I think all beings go to heaven. Charles, what do you think? Baxter asks to see if there will be a difference in opinion. Charles ponders, and as he gazes into the clear blue sky, he says, I believe that Sir is everywhere. I believe he is in the heavens and in the sky and clouds. I think he is in our hearts and in our conversations. I think he could be sitting with us right now, and my heart feels good thinking that way. We sit quietly and study our feet as we draw sand circles. Limerick clears her throat and then whispers, Sir is in all things, and I am sure he smiles at us all the time. Then, with a bashful look, she adds, I like to think that he has become my guardian angel. Guardian angel, I ask. Yes, I believe he has become my guardian angel. I think he will guide me and be in my heart so my heart can guide me. We all fall silent. What a nice thought to think Sir could be a guardian angel. Do you think he can be my guardian angel too, Limerick? Or is he just your guardian angel? Limerick, with a song in her voice, says, He is now everyone's guardian angel, yours and mine. I bet he is even watching out for that little girl on the swing. She points to the smaller playground where the youngest play. We feel good, really good to think he has become our angel. It brings peace to our hearts and it makes us smile when we think of him. And it does take the sting out of him not being here with us. For our hearts know he is here just now as an angel. The bell rings and we all stand. Just then, for some reason, the wind kicks up and the sand around our feet starts to swirl. We notice there is an extra sand circle beside ours. We all look at each other in disbelief. But we soon realize Sir has just made a perfect sand circle with the help of Mother Nature. After school, it is time for our daily walk. When I arrive home, Mum has already dressed the two, and now, with the weather getting colder, she puts on little coats for them. They look adorable in their matching outfits. Look, Finnin, Tiernan says, 
eagerly putting his hand out to show me what he is holding. What is it, little man? Look, it's an angel. He holds out a little figurine. It is made from pewter. The wings are spread out and the halo around the angel's head is painted in gold. He places it in my hand. Where did you get this? I ask, stunned about what had happened earlier in the day. Mum gave it to me. She has one for you too. Paige has hers already. Mum comes into the kitchen and says, I see your brother has shared his pocket angel with you. Pocket angel? Yes, Finnan, an angel that you can carry around in your pocket to remind you of the goodness in your heart. She hands me the pocket angel she purchased for me. Mine looks a little different. My angel has wings that wrap around to the front, almost like a blanket. I hold the angel and I sit at the end of the table. Mom, what made you buy these angels? She looks at me in bewilderment and in a quiet voice answers with the question. Do you not like your angel? Mom, I like the angel. I then share what happened today on the bench, the conversation we had about Sir becoming an angel, the feeling that I have been given a guardian angel. Mom stands up to kiss the top of my head. In it, that's a sign from the heavens to let you know that you are loved. Mom, do you believe in angels? Do you think Sir could be an angel? Before my mom can answer, Tiernan blurts out, of course Sir is now an angel. I can see him. Mom and I look at each other in confusion. You can see him? Yes. I can see him. Being that I listen to my heart, I know it is possible that Tiernan is able to see him, even if it is his imagination. He holds his angel in a tight fist and says, I'm putting my angel underneath my pillow, so when I sleep, I have good dreams. I study my own angel and the wings being wrapped around to the front intrigue me. Tiernan's angel looks like it is ready to take flight. My angel looks peaceful. I guess that is how life goes. Sometimes we want to spread our wings and other times we want to be still. I am pleased my mom has given me the stillness angel. I'm going to put mine under my pillow too, little man. Tiernan smiles as he continues to study his angel. I walk around the block wondering and pondering about many things. Sky Charles and Hemingway still receive plenty of attention with their matching handkerchiefs and coats. They still look as though they belong in a circus performing great acts. My little brother has done a brilliant job with his pretend circus. As I approach Sir's house, I notice my heart is thumping a little harder. When I look at the porch and the chair he used to sit in, I can almost see him tip his hat to me as his pipe smoke trickles upward and the twinkle in his eyes shine. I rub my eyes and he is gone. I ponder about imagination. What is real? What is pretend? I wonder if we create with our imagination to make things become real. And all the while I am in deep thought, my heartache can be felt. Sky Charles wants to walk up the laneway. He's gotten used to getting his treats from Sir. No, Sky, no treats from Sir today. Sky looks at me and I believe that somehow he understands. He sits at the end of the walkway leading to the front porch and he stares at the empty chair. He is an angel now, I say to my companion pets, and I remember the angel figurine in my pocket. I take out my little angel to show Skye and Hemingway. I really think they understand 
because as we start walking again, they both look up towards the sky. When I get home, mum is placing dinner on the table and my dad is at the sink washing his hands. How was the walk? My dad asks. It was really good, dad. The neighbors sure do get a laugh out of their outfits. My mum ruffles up my hair and says, See, Finn, you three make people smile, and that is important. Dad, do you believe in angels? My dad looks at my mum and gives a nod, as if he knew I would be asking the question. Yes, Finn, I do believe in angels. I think your mum is an angel, and I think that my three children are angels. But, Dad... What I mean is, do you think when people go to heaven, they become angels? Finnan, life is a mystery, and there are some questions that don't have answers. The answer is in your heart. Sometimes it's the only place that has the answers to the questions we can't understand. What is important, Finnan, is that if you believe when people go to heaven, they become angels, if that makes your heart feel good and can bring peace to you, then by all means, allow your heart to give you the answer that feels right for you. But dad, you didn't really answer the question, do you believe in angels? Son, I did answer the question, I do believe in angels. I also believe that our beautiful loved ones who have passed are here with us, that they are not very far away. If you can believe the earth is heaven, then you know for sure they are close by. This is more than my brain can handle. The more my dad speaks, the more confused I get. I hear my heart whisper, the answer is love, always love. Love is the answer. I ponder that too. How can love be the answer when we don't know the answers? Your heart is love. I hear the gentle whisper and then I finally begin to understand what my dad is saying to me. Your heart has the answers. They are spoken with love, and if an answer feels like love, if it brings happiness and peacefulness, then it is your answer. It doesn't mean it will be another's answer. I am intrigued, but it is making sense to me. We all have our own hearts to listen to, and if we can listen to our own heart guide us with love, we will always have the right answer for our own questions. I understand what both my heart and my dad are saying. Find the answer that feels like love. As I wash my hands, I give thanks for the wisdom I have just received. I give thanks for my pocket angel. I give thanks to Sir for the wisdom that he has shared with me. I know he lives in my heart, and if he wants to be an angel who lives in my heart, that is great with me.